2 Corinthians 12. Father, we come before you. We do thank you for your word. Thank you for the many hands quickly intervening to help our brother. Lord, I do ask that he would be home at, home at his own table for dinner tonight. Watch over, Lord, and keep your people. Thank you as we gather, Lord, you are in our midst. You promised to be where two or three are gathered in your name. And Lord, I thank you for those you brought this morning. As we open your word, Lord, please open our hearts afresh. Lord, <laughs> what a day as we're talking about affliction. I pray, Father, that you would just encourage your people in the midst of it. In Jesus' name, amen. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, chapter 12. But I will come to visions, plural, <clears throat> and revelations of the Lord. Turn to the right, two pages, three pages, tops. Galatians chapter 1, Paul writing says, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. He didn't go to seminary, he didn't sit with the apostles. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation, or manner of living in time past in the Jews' religion. Verse 13, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, the Gentiles, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, <clears throat> neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, modern southern day Saudi Arabia, and I returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him about 15 days. But of other apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. He was discipled by the Lord. That's why you'll read in Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians, that which I receive from the Lord give I to you. So, it's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, but I'll come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, just what in the world is happening? Well, you're waiting for me now in Acts 14. Are you going to do this a whole service? Maybe. Acts 14. It came to pass at Iconium that they went in both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. So a long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which, had, uh, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by Paul and Barnabas' hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part held with the Jews, who don't believe, part held with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it, and they fled unto Lystra and Derbys, Derby, city of Iconia, unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, lame being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. How many of you have had a knee surgery or two? Hip, hip replacement, hip surgery? Let me see. Broken foot, ripped ACL, tendons? Anybody? Hands up. Come on, hands up. After you get out of the boot, what would you have to go to? Therapy. Keep that in mind. Never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and, without therapy, walked. When the not busting on therapy, just pointing out the obvious. When the people saw what Paul had done, or God through Paul, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. This is Greco-Roman mythology. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands under the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. 
which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes, ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you. We preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he has not left himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven, fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And when these sayings scarce restrained they, with these sayings, they scarce restrained the people that had not, and that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And then there came thither certain Jews from Antioch who were upset with them, and from Iconium who were upset with them. And they persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, remember he said last week once he was stoned, this is it. Having stoned Paul, they drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Now, I'd like to think they kind of knew what they were doing. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, and he's not looking good, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. What on earth was going on? Well, back to our chapter. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. We think this is lining up with that account. We'll know for sure in heaven. You can ask Paul when you get there. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. You get the sense he didn't know? God knoweth. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was, Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, yeah. Who is he talking about? What do you mean? I, first person, you, second person, he, she, or it, third person. He's talking in the third person. Who's he talking about? Oh, glad you asked. Uh, it was a tendency among rabbis, according to historians, that when they would speak of themselves, they would sometimes speak of themselves in the third person. Now, you're like, oh, that's crazy. Well, one of our staff members, when he gets really upset, he starts speaking of himself in the third person. <laughs> that's when we know he needs coffee. <laughs> you have to be here to understand. So I'm like, oh, this is just like a staff lunch. <laughs> How that he was caught up. We talked about it last week. Harpazo snatched away with sudden force. He was caught up into paradisos. How many thought of that word during the week? Paradise, paradisos, garden covered it last week, that Persian word. As Jesus said to that thief on the cross, you'll be with me in paradise. He was caught up into paradise, and he heard unspeakable words. What kind of words? Unspeakable. So what were they? They're eretos. That is, without being able to be uttered. Unspeakable. In other words, you're going to have to wait till you get to heaven. Uh, our sister shared first service about how she'd like to get to know all of you, and uh, it's awfully hard to do in a quick Sunday in and out, meeting the different services, uh, but trying to connect as much as possible, and, and the Lord laid on her heart, that's why I have heaven. I'd love to get to know all of you, find out your story, you know, and all that, and someday, God willing, I will, whether it's down here or up in heaven, but wow, you think about it, like heaven, you finally have all that time you didn't have because you have to go to soccer games and you have to, you know, take grandma home and all the other things you've got to do, Right? They were unspeakable words. It's not lawful. It's not moral, possibly, or the idea of basically upright or proprietary. It's not lawful for a man to utter. This stuff was so cool, it's not lawful for me to utter it. This, by the way, I think explains why he went back into town. What do you mean? I think he walked in and went, finish the job! Finish the, you can't hit, come on, finish the job! Send me back. Of such a one will I glory. Yet of myself, I will not. In other words, that had nothing to do with me. That was God pulling me up. Yet of myself, I will not glory. But in my infirmities, my weakness or sickness. Now, he was caught up to the third heaven. First heaven, atmosphere. Second heaven, sun, moon, stars, universe. Third heaven, the presence of God. It was God's doing. Of such a one I will glory, but of myself I will not glory, but my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Of course, the false teachers were doing the very thing. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations 
there was given to me, did am I given, a thorn. That is a scolopes. How many like a scolopes? Scolopes is basically pointed, sharp, stake, or point of a hook. Sounds bad. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted. Whoa. Uh, Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, is, is Paul saying he was demon-possessed? Well, hold on. Go to chapter 1 of this book. Chapter 1. Let's set the record straight. Chapter 1, he said, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him are amen, and the glory of God by us. Verse 21. Now he which establishes us with you is Christ, or in Christ, or he which establishes you, let's try it again. He which establishes us with you in Christ hath appointed or hath anointed us as God, the one who does it, who also has sealed us and given us the earnest of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. The moment you trusted in Jesus, he gave you the Holy Spirit. He said it in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'll pray to the Father that he will give you another comforter who will be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. He will be with you. He will be in you. The moment you trusted in Jesus, you received through that act of faith in Christ his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides you in all truth. He directs your path. He speaks things to come to our hearts. He gives us gifts for the service of the Lord. And most importantly, as he told the Ephesians, he has sealed you to the day of redemption. The word used here in Corinthians as well as Ephesians is thragizo. And that has two meanings. One, a seal showing ownership, like this water bottle. Two, the other use is a seal like this lid, and that, you guys are worried, aren't you? Nothing comes out. Bad enough he spits when he teaches. Now he's throwing water out. Sealed. Yes? Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. That's what it means when you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. John writing to the church, talking about the spirit of Antichrist, the demonic realm. He encouraged the believers by saying, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And he who is in you has sealed you. So this idea that is Paul saying that somehow satanic elements are working in him? The answer is no, he was sealed. Now, is this sealed? Yes? Can it be oppressed? How about if I, oh, just kidding, sorry. Can it be distressed? But yet what's inside is uncorrupted. Satan was allowed to afflict Paul outwardly in some fashion, but could not have him. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't like that. Okay, well, wait for me in Luke 22. Luke 22. Last Supper, Jesus has allowed the disciples to know that someone's going to betray him. Having just dropped that truth on him in verse 21, verse 23, they begin to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And while trying to figure out who's going to betray him, a second argument came up, and that was there was also strife among them of which of them should be accounted the greatest. You imagine? And Jesus said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. This afternoon would be just fine, Lord. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And as this is happening, he goes directly to Peter. Peter had been given the keys to the kingdom. Peter was one of the three exclusives to be on the Mount of Transfiguration with James and John to see 
Jairus' daughter raised from the dead, as well as a few other things. And as this is all unfolding, I think, I don't know if Peter's kind of going like, yeah. But he turned to him and he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. You're coming up in conversation. But I have prayed for you. Can you think of anything better? It tells us that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. I have prayed for you. When you are that your faith, sorry, I pray for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted or turned back, strengthen your brethren. And Peter said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both in prison and to death. And he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day before you shall thrice deny that you know me. He was being humbled. If you remember, after Jesus rose from the dead, he met the disciples. And he said to Peter, do you love me? Peter answered, Lord, you know I have affection for you. He said, Simon, Peter, do you love me more than these? Lord, you know, you know I have affection for you. Peter, do you, know, do you have affection for me? Peter began to be very troubled. Lord, you know everything. You know I have affection for you. Feed my sheep. Jesus had to restore Peter publicly because Peter fumbled on the one-yard line and no one would ever give him the ball again. Seriously. So he had the keys but that sifting from the devil was used to make him useful. Turn to 1 Peter 5. Let's hear it from his own mouth. 1 Peter 5. I know what you're thinking. Well, if that's what it takes, then uh, I don't want to serve. <laughs> I know, I know. Some I see the thought like, well, then forget serving because then I won't get attacked. Uh huh. Chapter 5. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, this is Peter writing, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Glory we can't even tell you about, as we already learned. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Wait a second, that's important. You just learned in one verse why we don't have church membership. You don't? No. Oh, good. I thought I had a meeting and envelopes coming. No. We don't have church membership. You're not our sheep. What do you mean? Feed the flock of God, which is among you. You're God's sheep. Worst thing we could ever do is get you to look to a shepherd here instead of the good shepherd who sits at the right hand of the Father. You belong to him. He died for you. He purchased you with his blood. We didn't. You're not our sheep. You're his sheep. Now, if you're here, we'll do our best throughout the studies during the week or weekend to try to equip you for the work of ministry and encourage you. But you're not our sheep. You're his sheep. Once you get that straight, it changes how you handle them. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not a filthy lucre to make money, but of a ready mind, Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. When, not if, the chief shepherd, chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. This is the guy who learned it. For God resisteth the proud. Put any context at Last Supper. But gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And the church said, amen. Whether you choose to be in the game or not, you have a roaring adversary. If he could have his way with any of us, he would love to kill, murder, and destroy, as Jesus said. Now have a nice week. See you next Sunday. If you've trusted Jesus, you're sealed. 
Right now, you may be in a season where it feels like everything is wrong. You're in pain. Maybe even literally being attacked in the demonic realm. And what has to increase is your faith. We were told, take heed, you be not deceived about the last days. Now, when they put a little video on the news or in whatever, not that I'm on it, but TikTok or any of the other platforms, you don't know if what you're seeing is real or false. You don't know if a, a candidate for a president or whatever has actually said the statement or somebody generated it. You are in a unique time in history. The demonic realm doesn't seem to have to hide its agenda much anymore either. But you don't have to be afraid. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're sealed. He can try to harass you. He can try to oppress you. But he can't have you. You belong to Jesus. He purchased you with his own blood. So why am I going through this? Let's go back to our chapter. Lest I be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, verse 8, I besought the Lord thrice, Paul's praying, that it might depart from me. <clears throat> What's the answer he gets? The Lord said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. <clears throat> My strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, I have a reason for this, Paul. Let me work. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, being sick, in reproaches for Jesus' sake, in necessities, not having what I need, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I've gone through these things, the ideas, then I've learned God's power, not to mention his compassion, and I've become more useful to him. And if you're more useful to him, he's able to do more work for his glory through you, which means you have a greater reward in heaven. Well, I'm okay skipping the reward. Just let me not be tested at all. Come on. I have become a fool in glory. You have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you, for nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. And truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs, miracles of God is the idea, wonders. These are basically powers or essentially a revealing of God's moving and will. And mighty deeds, dunamis, with which you get dynamite, dynamic, dynamic power. For what is it wherein you are inferior to the other churches there at Corinth? Except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Well, then forgive me this wrong. So behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. Sadly, one of the things I think the church is getting backwards now in the last days is it seems like they're seeking what you have as opposed to where are you with Jesus. And one of the ways you'll know is they don't want to tell you what Jesus actually said, lest they offend you and may perhaps bring conviction to you that something in your life is going to be judged and needs to be repented of. Satan, we are told, is the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12. And he accuses the brethren before the throne of God night and day until, get this, the devil and his angels fight against Michael the archangel and his angels, a little logic here, and do not prevail. They lose. Uh, wait a minute. If Satan and his fallen angels can't overthrow Michael and his holy angels, then how's he going to take out the creator of the angels? Anybody? Am I the only one? And then he's going to be cast down to the earth. You think it's bad what we see in the world right now? Wait till he knows he is now officially kicked out of heaven and has three and a half years to gather the nations to try and fight the return of Jesus Christ. Wow, that's what's going on. We should see an increase in deception. We should see an increase in people falling away from the truth. We may well for ourselves find things getting more and more difficult. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. He's overcome the world. If you're being tested right now, if you're being, you know, like, man, 
I walked in here feeling like this. Do you ever stop to think that maybe the kingdom of darkness actually sees you as a potential threat? Oh, didn't look at it that way. Try it. It might encourage you. You don't take flack when you're flying a plane until you get into the enemy's territory. God wants to work and God wants to use some of you and you have been getting basically stymied with fear and how could he ever use me or I've done too many bad things and all that. And meanwhile, you're perfect for what he wants to do and the kingdom of darkness is trying to keep you down. But we're out of time. First service didn't get that. Second service needed. Let's stand, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. Lord, thank you that you've written these things for our learning. If we're finding ourselves in just what seems to be an, uh, an unanswerable situation and we're in pain, we've been begging you to change it. And Lord, in times if we're not careful with our lips like Job, we begin to accuse you that you don't care. You know who they are, Lord, but they came into your house so burdened not realizing that there's a battle going on behind the scenes. I ask for your church, Lord, you would let that outpouring of the Holy Spirit come upon them, Lord. May we truly be empowered to be salt, to be light, to be witnesses, with a joy that so overflows that people can see we have something they don't. It cannot be bought, it cannot be earned, it can only be received by faith through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, bless your church, strengthen them and keep them, and Lord, we lift up Gary again to you. Pray that we would get a good report quickly. Thank you for all the hands that quickly came to his aid. If you are here and you do not know the Lord, he knows you. And if your heart is finally open to receive him, this is your prayer right where you sit or at home with your laptop. Lord Jesus, I ask your forgiveness. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you paid for my sins. I believe you died and rose again. I ask that you would come into my heart, that you would give me your Holy Spirit, that you would change my life, that I may know you have heard my prayer. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And Lord, as you promised, be my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. If you were bold enough to pray that prayer wherever you're standing, and you go straight through the doors and tell the folks at the info counter, they'll give you a Bible that'll be ready next week with your name on it. You can start reading these things for yourself. God bless you guys. Let's worship the Lord.